WAPT News begins with breaking news. Breaking right now, Governor Tate Reeves is giving an update on the state's COVID-19 response. Let's listen in. Um, it's always good, though, to be with Dr. Dobbs and Director McCraney. One of the few upsides of this pandemic has been getting to learn from professionals that know what they do, and I value their service. I also value the service to the state of Mississippi of their teams and to others that are working hard during this pandemic. We are here to give you an update on the facts. I trust all Mississippians to make good decisions, but to make good decisions, we have to have the facts. The facts are as follows. According to the Department of Health's data, Mississippi has 1,633 patients in hospitals battling COVID today and 486 in ICU beds. Both of those numbers now exceed the largest number we've had during the pandemic. In addition to that, both of these numbers are increasing with the presence of the Delta variant. But there is another statistic that we must all consider. In the last month, 89% of our hospitalizations and 87% of our deaths have occurred amongst the unvaccinated. We have had approximately 1.35 million Mississippians get at least their first dose. And our total hospitalizations amongst vaccinated Mississippians has been in the 150 range. Let me say that again, almost 1.35 million Mississippians have gotten at least their first shot. Only a couple hundred of those have been vaccinated. I've always told you that I'd be honest to you. And there are some mild side effects to the vaccine. And we should be willing to talk about them openly. But they have been proven time and again to be mild. And statistics show that they are very effective at preventing serious disease and they are very effective at preventing death. No single county in our state has a majority of its population fully vaccinated at this point. 16 counties are over 40% fully vaccinated. Last week, we administered 71,135 doses of the vaccine. This is the highest total that we have vaccinated since April, and it is a 256% increase over our lowest week in early July. In the first three days of this week, we have administered almost 41,000 doses, approximately 25,000 of which were first doses. And if this pace continues over the next four days, we will finish somewhere between 80 and 90,000 doses being administered this week. All told, 2.4 million doses have been administered in our state. 1.35 million, as I mentioned earlier, have received at least the first dose. Just a hundred or so shy of 1.1 million Mississippians are fully vaccinated. So some 46% of our population has received at least one dose and some 37 plus percent of our population has received a full, full doses. Now, getting the vaccine is your choice. It is your decision. And as your governor, I will always defend your right to make that decision and I will respect your decision. As I mentioned the numbers earlier, however, more and more Mississippians are concluding that getting vaccinated is a good choice. A good choice not only for themselves, but for the people around them. If you are not vaccinated yet, I hope you will talk to your doctor. I hope you will study the statistics. And I hope you will make your decision based upon the facts. 
If you choose to not be vaccinated, there are other choices that you should consider to protect yourself and to protect the people you love. As we saw over the last year and a half, social distancing and masking and avoiding necessary, unnecessary indoor crowds have all proven to help. And they're all things you can decide to do on your own. I would like to take just a moment and talk about that idea of responsibility. I believe you, as an individual Mississippian, can be trusted to make good and responsible decisions. Good practices are a choice. Staying healthy is a choice. Keeping your neighbors and your coworkers healthy is a choice. Now let's all make the right choices. Last Friday, I provided you with an update on what we've been doing to bring additional resources to aid our hospital system. I will provide you with another update today. The Mississippi Emergency Management Agency and the Mississippi State Department of Health has been carefully and thoroughly reviewing the 19 bids they received last Friday. So far, they have processed 57 clinical staffing task orders for hospitals around the state. The staffing companies are currently providing lists of their staff to both MEMA as well as the Department of Health for licensing, for medical licensing in our state. After the licensing process is complete, MEMA will coordinate the deployment of these additional resources to our hospitals. The goal is to have the staff arriving sometime early next week, if not sooner. Last Friday, I mentioned to you that MEMA had requested 150 additional ventilators from the national stockpile. I'm happy to announce today that the state has received all 150 of them. Components of Mississippi Med 1, a Mississippi field hospital, has been deployed to UMC to assist in decompressing their emergency room. A 20-bed unit has been established and is being staffed by 39 National Disaster Medical System Disaster Medical Team members. In addition, a seven-person U.S. Public Health Service team is working at UMC to assist with the administration of monoclonal antibodies. There are really multiple paths one can take to avoid the hospital. One of those is to get vaccinated. If you were to get COVID, please talk to your doctor about the use of monoclonal antibodies. I know Dr. Dobbs will spend some time talking about that today. It is another way, if you test positive, to keep yourself out of the hospital. In addition, we are so thankful that Samaritan's Purse 50-person team has established operations at UMC to help with the statewide transfers within the system of care that we set up and are helping us decompress overly congested hospitals. This facility will consist of 32 beds, including five additional ICU beds. We asked for and received a 33-member National Disaster Medical Team, a DMAT team, as they are referred to, at North Mississippi Medical Center, assisting with their hospital decompression. We asked for and received 10 two-person federal teams to assist in the administration of monoclonal antibodies. These teams began work yesterday and are in addition to the current resources in over 40 COVID centers of excellence providing mono, monoclonal antibody treatment. Should you test positive, and particularly if you're vulnerable, but should you test positive, 
please talk to your doctor about monoclonal antibody treatment. In, this, in addition, the Mississippi Department of Health has expanded COVID testing sites in mobile locations. In Lowndes County, we moved to five days per week in the parking lot at the Lowndes County Health Department in Columbus. We have started testing again in Lincoln County in the parking lot of the Health Department in, in Brookhaven, two days per week, and in Batesville in the parking lot of the Panola County Health Department, two days per week. Due to high demand for testing and increasing traffic concerns, the Rankin County Health Department testing location has moved back to Trustmark Park and began operations today. Now, I would like to move to the subject of schools. I think it's fair to say that we are all learning as we move through this pandemic. Much of the early stages, a lot of us didn't know what we didn't know. I know I certainly have learned from some of the really good and some of the not so good decisions that I have made. And I'm sure everyone watching today can say the same. One of the things our whole country learned is that it's vital that our kids are in school doing in-person learning. Closing schools last year was a mistake that far too many states made. We've not been perfect in Mississippi, but I am proud we didn't make that mistake. Our kids, by and large, stayed in school all year last year, and our kids will never, ever give up the academic gains they made because they were in school. That is why my priority this year on schools is simple. Do whatever it takes to stay in person. That's one of the reasons that last week I extended our state of emergency. I wanted to enable our local school districts to have all the tools they need to keep their schools open. If they want to offer vaccines with parents' permission to those 12 and up, they can. If they want to do social distancing and rearrange class sizes to do it, they can. If they need to utilize masks, they can, and they have the ability to do so. I want every school open every day possible this year. And I am willing to give local governments every tool they need to do it. We simply cannot accept surrender on educating our kids. Now we know there will be outbreaks and there will be quarantines. This is the nature of a contagious airborne virus. As vaccinations increase and as local administrators adopt mitigation tactics that they know will work and be accepted in their areas, these quarantines will decrease. I am asking all Mississippians to join me in this effort to keep our schools open. That means you have to make good decisions to help slow transmission in your communities. More cases in the community will necessarily lead to more cases in our schools. And that will make keeping our kids in the classroom that much more difficult. We all know that our state has suffered in the past because of lower educational attainment than some other states. We all know that education is the key to our future. I believe that this is a value that almost every Mississippian shares. And now it is time to prove it. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Dobbs and then to Director McCraney. Dr. Dobbs. Thank you very much, Governor. And, and thank you for your discussion about the vaccines. It's such an important element of how we're going to get out of this. Um, we know how effective it is at keeping folks 
out of the hospital and alive with their loved ones. The vast majority of cases, hospitalizations and deaths in Mississippi are in the unvaccinated without a doubt. We were very fortunate to see uh, over 71,000 vaccinations in Mississippi last week. That's fantastic. We've already seen over 40,000 reported this week, and we know there's a little bit of a reporting lag. So we're seeing pretty good responsiveness for vaccinations. People are recognizing how important that is to surviving not only COVID, but the Delta surge, which has been so destructive for the state of Mississippi. But one of the things I really want to talk about is our monoclonal antibodies that our partners are doing across the state. That's been a phenomenal resource. As you, as you know, and the governor mentioned, we have 10 teams, federal teams, that are augmenting what's going on in the state of Mississippi. And they are located in Lauderdale County, DeSoto County, Jackson County, Bolivar, Clay, uh, Claiborne, Forest, Pearl River County, Warren, Adams, and then we have one in Jackson. By and large, they were chosen these locations to, to augment what our Center of, of Excellence program is offering. We have 45 Centers of Excellence hospitals and other medical centers and health systems and clinics that are committed to giving antibodies to people in the general public, even if not in the practice, which has been a phenomenal resource. But in total, we have 179 locations in the state of Mississippi that are offering monoclonal antibodies. So if you get COVID, we want you to talk with your doctor about monoclonals. But not only that, um, starting now, we are adding a call center for monoclonal antibodies. So if you call the hotline at 1-877-978-6453, there will be an option for monoclonal antibody information about where you can go to get monoclonal antibodies. And in certain areas where we have special relationships, they will do a direct handoff with that center to make sure you have access to monoclonal antibodies. In addition, I think you all know that UMC started offering a patient select sign-up where you can sign up for yourself online or, or by phone to come in and get antibodies without going to a doctor. Um, I did sign a statewide executive order, uh, standing order, so that practitioners, nurses, et cetera, can give monoclonal antibodies directly without having to go through a physician or provider first to overcome barriers, whether it's time, effort, or people who don't have insurance. So we're trying to make that more and more available. And I'd like to just give one quick sort of a shout out. This is an example. This isn't, you know, I'm not saying there are other wonderful people out, out there doing work, but I had an opportunity to visit with Highland Hospital in Pearl River County earlier this week. Um, and Brian Maxey, the CEO there, has been very passionate about helping his community, like so many other folks in their communities. And they're one of the places where we have these federal teams supporting. Yesterday, they did over 500 COVID tests and we have supplied them with additional rapid tests because they're doing so many. So we're here to augment what's going on locally. Of those 500 folks, they gave over 100 monoclonal antibody treatments to people who tested positive. They saved lives yesterday, and they will save lives going forward. But in addition, and I think this is a fantastic approach, people who tested negative and were appropriate, over 100 got the COVID vaccine at the same process. So this is the sort of innovation we're seeing at the ground level by local leaders, and we just want to really call out the wonderful work they're doing, encourage others to sort of, you know, heed the call, stand up, help your community, and um, uh, Mr. Maxey and other folks like him around the state, we thank you for what you're doing. This is what's going to get us through this pandemic, and obviously if they need our help, um, they'll get with us. Um, that's all I have. Thank you, Governor, and thank you all. Good afternoon. I just want to uh, uh, kind of expound on some of the, the things that the uh, uh, governor spoke about, as well as Dr. Dobbs. We're all it, we're, we're all in each other's lane, uh, but we're all locked, uh, steady together, and, and and we're moving forward. So, uh, out of those 57 requests that we've got from hospitals for for staffing, we're we're currently working those. Uh, you're, you're you're talking almost uh, 1,100 personnel. That'll be going out statewide, and we will make the mark of the first of next week. Uh, I'm very confident in that. We're, we're finding that the licenses are very good. Department of Health is, is working uh, very, very fast on uh, confirming what we're seeing. But, but I, th I think the most important thing is, is, well, what does this really do for the state of Mississippi? Well, I'll tell you what it does. 680 med medical surge beds. 
That's a significant number. 680. ICU beds, 212. Once we get these people in place, it will increase. So that, that's, that's going to take some pressure off of the medical system in which it currently finds itself because of this pandemic. Uh, we've got 10% uh, of those, uh, those that have applied already. We've got 10% of the entire number that we need that, that, that are currently in the vetting process. And we're continu continuing to see calls now. I my staff just before we walked in here, and we're, we're getting that, that from those vendors and work in those as quickly as we can. Uh, the, the governor talked about the, the antibody teams that uh, we, we continue to get from the federal government, and I, and I continue to communicate with uh, FEMA uh, representative, Ms. Gracia Sheck, uh, my counterpart for this entire region. And also, I have a, a twice a week call here lately with all the EM directors of the other state, and we're sharing tricks. We're, we're sharing well, what are the trends that we're seeing. We're sharing equipment with each other, and we're doing transfers back and forth. If they need help, we were ready to go help Alabama when the uh, hurricane came there. So we still have these other disasters that we're working as well that I want to expound on. And I've got a great staff uh, that continue to do great work uh, back at uh, the, the Memo property the building, and we're currently out in the field still doing river flooding, still doing uh, the flooding in North Mississippi, and we still continue to handle those. We've worked hand-in-hand -hand with another state agency, the Department of uh, Education, to ensure, we started this about four months ago, to ensure that we had enough uh, youth masks on hand, along with the uh, Department of Health, what we looked at, and we've been distributing those. We've been getting hand sanitizers out to these schools. We've been stocking them over the summer months to get ready because we want schools to be open. We want the children to be able to be there as long as they can because that's going to make a significant difference, I think, in the development later on. And emergency management is a part of that. We're part of the community. We're part of the, the, the overall response in the state.